Hi, welcome to this uh, Deering Claw Hammer number two uh, presentation. And uh, if for those of you who saw the previous, um, or let's just say if you haven't seen the previous, it's kind of important that you go back and watch the first one before you see this one. Because we're gonna cover some information in this one that's a little bit more advanced and you need the background of the first DVD or the first presentation in order to kind of follow what we're doing here. I also wanted to take a moment to uh, thank all of you who have written to us and have commented on YouTube. Um, this second video that we're presenting today is probably the most requested video that we've ever presented. And it's because uh, all of you have uh, been you know, so enthusiastic about the first one. Uh, we'll try to give you some further information on this one. And uh, so let's head right into it. Okay, first what we want to do, um, in the previous video, we established the basic claw hammer approach, which is... Okay, now, it's important that you be able to perform the basic claw hammer movement at that speed in order to progress with the rest of our presentation today. Now, having said that, if for any reason this feels like a little too pressure, you know, a little too fast, a little too hard to do, don't worry about it. Go back to the first presentation, go over it again, and just practice this as many hours as you can until you're comfortable with this real basic And remember the cardinal rule of musical instruments. When you practice slow, you learn fast. Okay, let's, let's go in, uh, home and practice that just a little bit. Then we'll jump into the new presentation. Okay. There is a wonderful aspect to claw hammer playing, um, and it is a great accompaniment approach or a technique because it's got melody and it's got strumming, you know, the combination, and it's got that beautiful syncopated fifth string sound in there, which is just one of the most magical things about uh, the claw hammer banjo. So um, what we're going to do is take portion of a song today. It's a song that many people know. It's called This Land Is Your Land, and it's a classic uh, Woody Guthrie folk song. Now, we're not going to do the whole song or anything like that, but we're just going to use a portion of it because it has chords arranged that are very uh, uh, accessible to folks getting started, like us. So here we go. Let's try. Um, we're going to use the uh, cameras here to focus both on my left hand and my right hand. But what I want to emphasize for this first section is that the right hand is not going to change, just the left hand. In the previous video, we learned the, the, well, the G chord. We all know that one. And then we learned the C chord, and we learned the D7 chord. So you will need to know those in order to progress through this video. So here's how the song goes. I'm going to just sing it a little bit. Please forgive my uh, vocalizing today. but. Uh, we're going to just do a little bit so you can get an idea how this is going to go. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Okay, now what we did there was what we'll call rhythm banjo. And, um, you know, you've heard people talk about rhythm guitar and rhythm instruments in general. What that is is a term that kind of refers to a, a backup or a support of the lead. In this case, the lead was 
my singing voice. So um, what we're going to do now is use that pace and that bit of that song, I think that might have been the chorus, but we're going to use that bit of that song as the basis for our picking out the melody. So let's get started on that. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start, um, now in the first video we mentioned that you can either use your uh, index finger or your middle finger. And I think I said that I use my middle finger because that's the way I learned to play. So, you know, I'm locked in. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick out just the melody note using the hit, what we used, uh, what we called the hit in the last uh, video, where we hit the strings with the nail of our striking hand, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to try to use the cameras to show you the notes that I'm playing. So I don't, I'll try to tell you some of the notes here, but it'll be easier, I think, if you just watch it. And as we go through it, you'll be able to see, um, you know, what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to hold my hand on, the, on my fretting hand. I'm going to try to hold it so that you only see one finger and you, it'll try to uh, show you, um, how, which strings I'm pushing and what frets I'm using without having my hand in the way. Ordinarily, you'd, I'd be holding it like this and, and you probably couldn't see what I'm doing because my hand is just barely moving. So I'm going to try to show you. This is not the way to do it, but I just want to show you so you can see how we're doing this. Okay, so here we go. Okay, what we did was we just played the melody using whichever striking finger or hitting finger that we use normally. Okay, now you're saying, well, okay, so I can play the melody. Here's what I want you to do. Go back, practice just hitting that melody, just hitting that melody with your whichever finger you're using. And once you get that melody comfortable, being able to fret it, being able to play it, you'll be doing great. Now, I did this and used these various fingers so you could see what I was fretting. You'll want to use whatever finger is closest to that string. So for example, if I was doing that same thing and keeping my hand in the playing position, see I'm not moving around as much okay so that's an example of how to finger it and use the fingers that are the most closely uh, distanced from that string or that fret that you're trying to play. So try to practice with that a little bit. Then when you get that to where you're feeling comfortable, come back to the video and we'll progress to the fancy version of the same thing. Uh, what we're gonna do now is fancy it up a little bit. We're gonna alternate between our striking finger uh, in my case, the middle fingernail and the thumb. And we're going to alternate hitting the melody note and we're going to pluck the fifth string. Now, one thing that you'll notice when I'm doing this, my hand, my, my fretting hand, is positioned 
over the fingerboard so that it is relatively close to where I want to go. Now you're saying, well, but Bear, I don't know where I want to go because I'm just learning and that's okay. Um, this song was chosen because the melody notes align themselves very closely with the D seventh chord and the C chord. So what I'll do on this first take is try to show you um, how we do this using our hand in a natural picking position. Then I might go through it later uh, and see if we want to do it just, you know, poking at each string and each fret so you can see more clearly where we're playing. So let's try this a little bit. Let's try this land is your land and with the fancy thumb and hit version. Okay, here we go. Okay, what we did there was we played the melody and we alternated between the thumb and the melody note. Very classic claw hammer approach to hit the melody note and then pluck the thumb. Now, in that song, This Land Is Your Land, there are moments when there's no melody. And this is true in most songs. This, this land is your land. This land is my land from California. There are these moments when there's no lyrics and there's no melody. It's almost like a rest point. What we're going to do now is do what we just did, but we're going to put some rhythm banjo in those moments where there are rest points. And this kind of brings the song to a full feeling when you play with the alternating of your hit and your thumb and then add the sort of self accompaniment in the quiet moments. So let's let's go through that just very quickly here. Well, actually we don't go through anything very quickly, do we? No, because when we practice slow, we learn fast. So we're going to go very, very slow here. All right. So here we go. Let's try this from the top. So what we did there is we played the melody, then when there was no melody happening, we threw in some accompaniment. One of the good things I think about these videos is that we don't have a lot of high tech stuff. We can't edit out all of <clears throat> the instructor's errors. And that's good because it's important that you guys see that this is all done for fun. And being able to hit the notes accurately is great, but that's not the whole story. It's 
It's a matter of enjoying the playing, enjoying the music, and enjoying the learning process. Um, everybody's learning constantly uh, as we go through life, you know, it's a learning process. But especially with something like the banjo, there's always more to learn. No matter who you are, no matter how great a player is, there's always more to learn. So um, hopefully breaking this down into these segments will give you some ideas about how to make your music sound very musical and adapt it to many, many other songs. We are also going to now show you some extra fancy techniques that will augment your ability to play notes in rapid succession. Ooh, that sounds like fun. So what we're gonna do now is talk about another technique called a hammer-on. Um, I think in music theory, they call these techniques legato, but you know, we call them hammer-ons because that's the way we learned it. Um, a hammer-on is essentially when you pluck a string and then you whack it really good with your fretting hand to create a second note. Now, just to show you how I accomplish this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pluck the string with my right hand, then I'm gonna move my right hand away from this part of the banjo and I'm gonna hit the note like this. Okay, and all I'm doing is basically treating the tip of my finger kind of like a hammer. And I am hammering, literally hammering the string. Okay, now this can be very useful, for example, if you pluck the string with your, or if you hit the string with your hitting fingernail, you can create a second note without doing anything with your plucking hand. Okay, now there's another technique. It's not used quite as often, uh, but it's very, very helpful, and it's called a pull-off. And this is an example of where you fret a string, like you can see here, and you literally pluck the string with your fretting hand. So I've got the string fretted, and I'm using the fourth string here just because it's handy and it, it's the biggest string and it makes the most sound. So I can pluck the string literally with my left hand. So that's called a pull-off, and that can be used Again, it gives you one more note that you don't have to pluck or hit with your right hand. What's really cool is when you use these in conjunction with each other. So if you do a hammer-on and a pull-off, you can create three notes with one hit of your, of your striking hand. Really cool, very efficient. Okay, now we're gonna talk about a slide. The slide is where you basically start uh, your fretting. Uh, let's just use the third string as an example here. And we're gonna start at the second fret. And we're gonna pluck the string and we're gonna slide without raising our finger up and dropping it back down. We're just gonna slide it across the frets, just right across. And it creates this kind of a slurring, sliding sound. Now, all of these slides, hammer-ons, and pull-offs take a little bit of time to get familiar with. Um, the hammer-on might be the easiest for some because it's kind of the most brutal, you know? You just smack that string and it, you can pretty much accomplish that by, you know, many techniques and many approaches. But nonetheless, um, the slide may be giving you the most trouble at first, but just remember you don't grip with a death grip the strings to hold them down there. 
you just push the string to the fret and let your finger slide over the frets until it arrives to the fret you want it to arrive at. Okay, now what we're going to do is a little exercise where we incorporate the hammer-on, the pull-off, and the slide. This isn't a song per se, it's just a little exercise that you can do uh, as a practice while you're watching TV, whatever. So let's, uh, let's start off and we're going to do a basic hit and claw hammer approach. I'll do this very slowly so you can pick up what I'm going to do. Okay, so we know how to play This Land Is Your Land. What we're gonna do is add a couple of new techniques, and I'm gonna go through this very slowly so that you can get a sense of how we're shifting, how we're, or how we're sliding, and how we're hammering on the notes. And I'm gonna try to sneak a pull-off in there at some point, if I can. Um, and what we're gonna do is start it off as we usually do, This is where the magic of claw hammer really comes together. So, uh, as I said earlier, 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 when you practice slow, you learn fast. And when you're learning the techniques like the hammer on, or the pull off, or the slide, those are pretty advanced techniques and they take time to get a feel for. Don't expect to do any of this stuff immediately. Nobody does. Uh, people that start from basic uh, beginning banjo, it just takes time to develop the muscles, uh, the tendons, the ligaments, and get your nervous system used to doing this. But the most important thing, of course, is to enjoy it as much as you can the whole time, because this is a riot when you can, you know, throw in these slides and these pull-offs and hammer-ons with your technique. It enables you to play more notes without having to hit them constantly with your right hand. So, slides, pull-offs, and hammer-ons in This Land Is Your Land. What a great combination. Okay, now, what we're going to do now is put this all together for you, 
and we're going to play the version uh, or a version uh, with the hammer-ons with the slides we're going to do it at a pretty good normal pace but we'll try to keep it a little or on the slow side and we're going to do this to give you an idea how this all comes together so here we go this land is your land This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream water, this land was made for you and me. Well, thanks so much for watching uh, this uh, Clawhammer video, and I hope this was helpful in uh, giving you some ideas. You'll notice probably I took some artistic liberties in playing This Land Is Your Land, and I was trying to emphasize some of them so you could see. There's a wonderful tradition in banjo playing and in folk music and bluegrass music and in jazz, many, many kinds of music, in improvising. Um, in improvising, you do need to have a solid foundation of technique. So that's why it's important to learn very slowly some basic techniques and to learn how to add in a hammer-on and a slide and a pull-off. So um, while you're learning, try to learn those techniques and as you practice the basic song, the basic melody, and you watch guys on the video adding these things in bizarre places, um, just remember that there's lots of room for creative uh, additions. As you become familiar, you'll want to throw those in. If you're like me, you learn to do a slide and you put it in every song you know, but you know, what can I say? So um, have fun with it. If you have any questions, of course, you know, contact us at the Deering Banjo Company. We're always thrilled to hear from you, and we hope uh, this has been very helpful, and you can enjoy your claw hammer banjo playing.